So a lot of the paintings here in the book, are they inspired from your travels up the coast and sailing and visiting yes. some of these wonderful communities? A lot of them are from our travels and also from just from poking around here on, on Salt Spring in the kayaks and mm -hmm. going for walks along just right here at home or in the, in the Gulf Islands. Really, for all the traveling we've done, you know, as we come home at the end of the summer, the Gulf Islands are so beautiful and you know we, we go wow the, our own home territory is so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Really a lifetime here to paint don't need to go anywhere. Yeah it's it is <laughs> a real blessing. So tell me about your art what going back what inspired you to use watercolor mm. and brush as your medium to show your passion? Well, that's a good question. Um, I first started with, I think, mostly oil pastel and the vivid colors of oil pastel. And my mom was all, would always bring home new, new medium, new different things, oil paint, oil pastel. She'd take art classes and come home and tell us what she'd learned. We'd all try it out. And, but there was one point when we got uh, enrolled in a, like a painting course, a summer painting course with a Japanese fellow, and I just remember his name, Mr. Hashimoto, mm -hmm. and he had a love for watercolor. He, and he would give, give us each a paper, and he would tell us to soak it, and then he'd say, just put a dot and watch it. Isn't that magic? And we would, oh. we'd watch it, and he also got us to do it with India ink, which you, even f flows even more, and it would make all these spidery patterns, and you'd just watch it, and then you'd make something out of it, but that just the way he taught us and got us enchanted with the wash and how the paint flowed itself, mm -hmm. there was nothing that captured my love after that. Yeah, to watch he, that pigment move. Yeah, see yeah. See what came as a result of it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you would know that. So from there, did you always stay with watercolor? Was that the, the, the launch that, that kept you there? Pretty much, yes, I did, yeah. I mean, through high school, that was, I mean, I was 12 then, and through high school, the art teachers would get us to learn different, try different mediums, and um, I think when I finally decided I was officially gonna try being an artist, <laughs> I thought I better try the classic medium of oil painting. So I got oil paints and some, stretched some canvases, and I did seven. And it, what a different feeling for me Compared to watercolor, where the where the water is like a partner in the in the in the adventure, mm -hmm. and you do something and the water carries it away. With the oil, you just have to budget around, and everything that happens is from your hand. There's no there's no partner that's moving the pigment. I love how you say that. It's a partner. Well, it, it it really is. It can be a partner you love, or when you're. <laughs> <laughs> it can challenge you too. <laughs> Parties yeah. also are really great for growth. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. And so you were really working with watercolor since you were in your early teens. And yeah, then really. Full time, yeah, full time mm -hmm. into watercolor. When did that happen? Um, well, I went to UVic. I went to. I took the fine arts program at UVic, thinking I might find someone in this. In the you know in the staff that was interested in watercolor. I, I basically was looking for someone that I could, whose work I admired that I could learn from. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned all kinds of things, a little small amount of watercolor, a lot of sketching and uh, sculpture making and print making. Mm -hmm. After that first year I realized I, I truly love watercolor. There's nothing that mm -hmm. interested me nearly as much. So I, at that point I decided there's nothing to do but just paint full time and practice and experiment because I couldn't find that person that I thought I was looking for that was like a master that I could study under. Did you find that your style established really quickly when you started painting? Full well, I, interestingly my plan was to be a children's book illustrator. So I, did, I used watercolor relatively realistically, but I had the black India ink lines around everything. And I kind of like the style, I don't know if you know Arthur Rackham's kind of style. Oh, I'll show you book after. And um, I, so it was, 
it was kind of from the mind, like sort of a little bit fantastic from the mind, but it, it you know, and with, with with the black lines around, so it had slight cartoony, almost illustrative quality to it. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't till I moved, it was... It, so these are paintings that you did? These are paintings. I, I illustrated one book okay. and that was published actually. Yes. Ah, I, I guess that's another book yeah, that was I'd published. Yeah, see that. And then another one that it, it's only been published very recently okay. that um, the author had to self-publish it. We couldn't find a publisher. Mm -hmm. But I realized after, after uh, doing the one book that it was not going to be a living. Re practically it was not going to ma make me a living so I needed to change. Uh, but at this, but what happened is I lived on a little island where I had to row to every day to get back and forth yes, I and I became story. more appreciative of the, the scene around me and suddenly I just, well not suddenly, it was a gradual process. I changed my style from the illustrations mm -hmm. to more of just straight painting of what what was in the world around me, mm -hmm. and if, if I had a move there, I th I don't think I would paint the way I do or what I do. Mm -hmm. So it was that experience living on the island. Yeah, yeah, yeah. just north of here. Yeah, just much like? island, just off of Gabriola. But it made me stop. I was away from, you know, television or any you know any of the things the, of modern life, any of those distractions, and just looking at this world around me and just being so amazed by it and wanting to to show it finding a way to show it through my art so that's how I started painting the way I do and do you find when you paint do you do you get lost in the process do you do you, do you have a, a time when you start and a time when you end or <laughs> I do post? get totally lost what is time to you <laughs> <laughs> when I'm painting it doesn't exist I forget everything about it. I forget to get up. I forget to eat. I just, if I'm really interested in, in you know, what how it's coming along, I just I hate to quit. I really do. <laughs> I you know if I if I could had someone that would do all the other work of life that that I never had to quit, I would be overjoyed. But I do. I've found as I grow older, it's more it's important to get up, walk around you know get exercise and do gardening do something to break you know so the body's not sitting there but I forget that I have a body when I'm painting I, I used to do that with knitting you know you just one more row I just have to knit one more row you don't want to stop it's like that with painting it yeah. Yeah, you know that feeling, yes. wonderful feeling. <laughs> it is I think they say it's, you're in your bliss yeah it must be I'm a very lucky person because it's pretty much every day it's just the wonderment of it all, the beauty. There's a beautiful um, Persian poet, a, a line from a Persian poet that says, the lover's teacher is the loved one's beauty. And the cap loved one is capitalized, the loved one's beauty. And I think it really must be the beauty that just keeps me enthralled. I just can't stay away from it. I, 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 Unless my eyesight goes, I don't think I'll ever stop. This is a real passion. <laughs> I think that's true. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Carol. It's really been a pleasure being in your studio. Oh, it's been so nice to have you. Thanks for coming.